Hi, this is Andrew Prokop, and today I want to talk about IBM Watson. At its core, Watson is a cloud service that answers questions. This was made very apparent when Watson appeared on TV's Jeopardy in February of 2011. Not only did it win against Jeopardy's two most successful human contestants, it won big. While not exactly running the board, Watson was nothing less than spectacular. Not only was it a wash in facts and figures, but it was able to parse and understand the often convoluted structure of Jeopardy questions. Nearly eight years later, Watson has moved from television star to an artificial intelligence engine that can be utilized by enterprises to augment business processes with features such as language detection, language translation, natural language processing, and machine-driven conversation. Watson is capable of tasks as diverse as automating SMS, text, and web chat, problem resolution, weather forecasting, and even fashion design. Science fiction writers of the 1940s and 50s warned against creating a robot smarter than a human being, and for better or worse, their fears may be close to becoming real. Putting those concerns aside for now, let's take a quick trip into some of the tools that Watson provides. For programmer types, Watson provides a web page that acts as a front door to many of its features. Most are available without any sort of relationship with IBM, but to take full advantage of what IBM has to offer, I highly recommend signing up as a Bluemix developer. Registration is free, and as long as you keep your activity below certain thresholds, which are quite liberal, it's also free to use. For instance, I can make up to 1,000 natural language processing API calls a day before being charged. And speaking of APIs, let's take a look at a few of them. Let's start with natural language understanding. Begins with a definition of many of the concepts and the, the keywords that will be used in the APIs. Takes us down to show us the APIs that are available. I'm going to take a look at one of them, which is the Analyze function. So if I open up the Analyze function, it shows me all of the uh, parameters that I need to pass in the call. A lot of them, or most of them, are default, but I'll put in something. I'll say like a Debbie likes to watch hockey. It wants me to put in the features that it's going to process. And I have oh, quite a few to choose from. And I can say, well, let's choose um, entities and concepts and emotion and sentiment. And I can pick the rest as defaults, come down here, and then actually say, run it. Watson comes and in the response tells me things about the text. Well, first off, the sentiment is that it's positive. It found Debbie. Debbie is a, an entity. It's a person entity. We found that we're talking about a sport called hockey. We find some things about um, there's some joy in this, a, a decent amount. Very little sadness, very little fear, very little disgust, and very little anger. So these are the, some of the things that Watson will return in response to putting in any phrase that it parses and then returns back to you in the, a JSON structure of what it's discovered. All right, let's take a look at language translation. So very similar, I see all the APIs that are available. I'm going to pick just this one, Translate. It requires some text. Let's put the same text in there. Debbie likes to watch hockey. Wants to know what the source language is. It is English. And the target language, which is French. Come down here, try it out. And I won't uh, attempt the French. My high school French is extremely rusty, but you can see the French translation for Debbie likes to watch hockey. Finally, I want to talk about Watson conversations. Conversations have all the elements of natural language processing, but they add the ability to create programmatic responses for the analysis. Among other things, conversations allow me to create bots that parse incoming text messages, inform me of the message's intent, and offer suggested responses. To exercise the APIs, I wrote a Python application that allows me to send data to Watson and examine the responses. So let's take a look. Launch my application. 
It's not the prettiest application, but it gets the job done. Make it full screen here. Let's go through, first off, I can go and list all the different languages that Watson supports. So, um, Arabic, uh, Azerbaijani, uh, goes on and on and on. I saw Bulgarian, Bosnian, Czech. So this is where I'm getting the things like English is EN and French is FR. So let's uh, take an example. So let's come back here and let's just say my example before. Debbie likes to watch hockey. Let's go back and say, well, what language is this? Watson can come back and say, well, I am pretty darn sure, 0.94, so nearly 100% sure that this English, and notice how it drops off really fast, how little confidence I have that it's German, DE, um, and I'm not even going to attempt what some of the other languages are down here. But again, English was the highest probability, so I'm going to assume that this is English. So if I come back here and I say English, and let's translate that to this time French. I'm sorry, German. Deutsch. So translate. And we come back here. I, my German is even worse than my French, so we did the translation. We can come back here and let's do French again. Um, translate. Um, Spanish. You get the idea. So. Uh, that's some of the translation tools uh, and the language tools that Watson uh, offers. So next, let's take a look at the natural language processing. So using the same phrase, Debbie likes to watch hockey, I can parse this or analyze this text for a number of things. So I can come back here and do what I did uh, similarly on the web page. So I can look for a emotion and sentiment. And I can say, well, let's parse the text. And we'll come back with many of the, well, exactly the same values that we had before. I can change this to, let's look at uh, entities and concepts. And then we get the, the entities that are involved in here, uh, and then the, uh, the contents that are involved in this, in this uh, phrase, Debbie likes to watch hockey, which then I can take into an application and use appropriately. One of the things that this also does, and this is pretty cool, I can enter a web page. So let's go to uh, my company, arrowsi.com. I can actually analyze the web page, and this time I'm going to choose um, emotion. Uh, I should do emotion and sentiment. Analyze the web page. What it will do is go out to the web page, and it will pull out all the text that it's analyzing, and then it will make some determination. And it will say, well, this is a fairly joyful website. I love that. Uh, there's very little fear. Uh, extremely little sadness, uh, there's there's relatively no disgust and no anger. Um, overall, the web page is fairly positive. I think this is pretty cool so that you can actually uh, go through and take large amounts of text, again, off of a web page, and then analyze this, analyze that for, um, again, any of the, the features that uh, Watson supports. I could do the same thing with a document as well, so I can send a document into Watson and parse that as well. Now, before I demonstrate the conversation APIs, I want to show you how to build a conversation in Watson. So Watson has a tool, an online tool that allows you to build conversations. I built a very simple one here called Package Delivery. So Package Delivery allows me to send in text. It parses the text and determines what the intent is of that text. And I have two intents configured. One is called Delivery Request has to do with somebody's asking for a package to be shipped. And the other is delivery question that's wondering about a, a shipment. When will a package arrive? So if I look at delivery request, open this up, you can see that I primed it or taught it with a number of different questions. So I enter these questions in and I say all these have to do with a delivery request like ship my package today, uh, please ship my order, things like that. Watson with its artificial intelligence We'll take that information and we'll expand on it. So I don't have to enter every different way that you can ask for a package. Watson will understand from what I've given it so far how to interpret other ways of asking for a package. And the same thing with delivery questions. So I put in a, a number of different questions. When can I expect my delivery? When will, I, when will my package arrive? Another thing I want to show you, there are entities. So entities are, in a sense, sort of modifiers to your intents. So I have... I'm using a few of the built-in Watson entities, uh, syslocation, systime, and sysdate. 
and I will show you that uh, in the demo how they're used. You can create your own entities. And lastly, I have dialogues. So in response to one of these intents, it not only parses it and tells me things about what it just heard or read, but it gives me information as to how to properly respond. So again, think text bot, think chat bot. Now this is a very, very simple example. I don't go into too much detail. I'm giving it one possible response. So every time that somebody asks for a delivery question, I will respond back with, please enter your order number. And then every time somebody comes with a delivery request, I say your package will be shipped as soon as possible. Now clearly what I would want to do is I want to look at more information about the user and how to ship, you know, when the package was shipped and all that. But the fact that I know that this is a delivery request and I can build various responses and then plug those responses in uh, during at runtime is a very, very powerful idea. Okay, let's return back to my application and let's play with conversations. Conversations are all given a unique system identifier. This allows me to talk to Watson and say, I'm interested in this conversation application. This is how you should proce process this text. I pre Plug, I plugged in the, uh, the uh, system identifier for my delivery application. So let's come over here and I would say something as simple as, um, uh, when will my package arrive? And then into the conversation, Watson will come back. Again, this is all JSON. And it will come back and say, well, I've determined that the intent is a delivery question I'm 100% sure that it's a delivery question. Um, and it comes back with the response of please enter your order number. This is the thing that I configured earlier. So my text bot would ask for the order number and then I would you know, process that. And then I have other things that I would re uh, process to determine you know, the next answer. So let's change this. I think they ship my package. And then into the conversation. Watson will come back with, okay, here's ship my package. It is very confident that it's a delivery request and I'm supposed to respond back with your package will be shipped as soon as possible. Let's add something to this. Let's, uh, let's say ship my package next uh, uh, Thursday. And then into the conversation. Watson will come back and it will tell me, yes, this is a delivery request, but oh, by the way, I found an entity, happens to be a sys date, and it gives me the date of next Thursday. And then again, my response is your package will be shipped as soon as possible. So I hope you, you see what's happening here. So I'm sending into the conversation, Watson is processing it, giving me back the intent, any entities that it finds. So ship my package to Phoenix. end of the conversation <clears throat> and delivery request oh by the way <clears throat> I found another entity a different entity this one is sys location and it's Phoenix and I could say ship my package to Phoenix tomorrow and it would find both uh, sys location and the, the sys date so I, I, I hope you you see what's happening here pretty cool stuff so I'm not having to understand all this I basically built the application primed the pump Watson is now coming back and telling me the nitty gritty details about what it's finding. Now my application can respond to very simple requests rather than try to have to understand all this language, parse it out myself and then deal with it. All right, let's shift gears again. So let's close this out. Um, so again, this is all done with uh, Python. I could do this with any number of different languages, but I chose Python. Um, if you're not a Python programmer, this probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm sure it doesn't make any sense if you're not a Python programmer. And, you know, programming is, it, it's certainly not rocket science, but it, it requires training. It requires you to, to think in a different way and certainly requires you to understand the programming language. Let's say you don't understand that. So I took this same work and I built this into a workflow engine and I'm using here a via breeze for that. Via Breeze has a number of different tasks that allow me to do things like send text messages and send emails, uh, do all sorts of uh, telephony processing, uh, real-time speech analysis, uh, integrate with databases and web services and things like that. Well, it now has the capability, with the work that I've done, to 
talk to IBM Watson. So let's start this off. Let's say that I have an incoming text message. And I want to build a text bot here so I can say that this workflow launches when it receives an incoming SMS message. At this point, I can say, well, let's run this web, let's run this message into my language detection tool. And so I can say, well, what language this is this? Because I want to do everything in English because that's how I built my conversation. So if it comes in as German, then I would say, well, I need to translate this. So I would come in and I would sort of, I would say, well, let's build some sort of if-then-else logic. And I'm not going to go through all the details, but I would build this into an if-then-else logic. If it turns out it's not English, then I'm going to run it into the translation tool. So I want this to be English because that's how I build my translation tool. That's how I build my conversations. At this point, I could run it into the natural language processing. I could run it into my tone detection to determine things about the uh, the uh, attitude or the, the anger level, very similar to what we saw earlier with the natural language processing. But I want to run it straight in now into a conversation. So I can run it into a conversation. And the conversation will then do all the things that the conversation does. So again, this is if it's my delivery application, I'm going to ask, it'll be asking delivery questions, and I'm going to come back with responses. When I come back with the response, or when I come back with, you know, uh, the analysis, I can go in back to Breeze and take advantage of maybe a database tool. And I can look up, you know, this is a delivery request, so I can look up when will the delivery occur. I can then combine that with the information that came back from the Watson conversation. So let's say that I had it uh, such that it was a phrase that then required some sort of a delivery date. Your package will be delivered on. Go out to the database and it pulls that information out. I can then come back and, well, let's go and send a message right back to the person that texted me in that has all the information that was gathered from the conversation in the database and send that back. I now want to, well, let's see, is this good enough? You know, and maybe I can send a message back that, you know, part of my message says, have I, you know, have, have I satisfied this request? Wait for the response. If it, you know, get the response back, maybe what I need to do then is send that back into you know, my language translation, if this is German, you know, in, into English, but let's just assume that it's not. And then I need to send that back into uh, the conversation to determine what to do next. And maybe at this point, the what I get back is, you know, this is great, thank you very much. I can then send back a goodbye. And then we can close this session out um, and then free the resources and wait for the uh, next person to call in. So again, I, I've skipped uh, probably a number of the different steps, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm building very simply a text bot by simply dragging these Watson tools onto the canvas using the logic, the workflow logic to string them together to do things outside of Watson and then manage uh, this conversation and without writing a single line of code I will certainly go into these things and then you know put what the text message should be back you know what what what, what should be coming back and you know what what am I sending to the database but this isn't programming this is basically just typing a typing exercise so you're filling in the the required parameters so again breeze allows you to go away from this gobbledygook and then go to something that is so much easier to write, so much easier to pass on to somebody to understand. Um, takes me uh, hours, if not days, to do this, and I, it will take me uh, minutes to to put this together for a, a, a scalable uh, enterprise-grade application. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this useful, and your understanding of Watson is better now than when the video began. Again. This is Andrew Prokop, Aerosystems Integration. Bye for now.